I'm Becca Habiger here outside the U.S. Courthouse in downtown San Francisco, where I was in a bankruptcy hearing this morning for PG&E. There are a number of groups who want to say in the future of PG&E, and since the company declared bankruptcy back in January, there's a lot to say. But under current law, PG&E has first crack at that plan. Now, critics say you declared bankruptcy months ago, PG&E, and yet you haven't presented a plan. It's time for us to be able to step in. What these other groups want the judge to do is essentially terminate PG&E's exclusive rights to a first crack at a restructuring plan. The judge heard from all of the different groups today, including PG&E, and basically said, I'm going to give you guys about three weeks to get together, get at a round table, and see if they can hammer out a competitive process for fielding and vetting any plans for PG&E's future. This is important because the legislation we've been reporting on that just passed, that Governor Newsom just signed, AB 1054, the Wildfire Fund Bill, which creates that $21 billion fund for victims of future wildfires. Part of that law says PG&E has to be out of its bankruptcy proceedings by the end of next June before PG&E can tap into that fund to pay out victims of future wildfires. And coming up on August 9th, the judge will hear PG&E argue for an incentive package for its executives. PG&E wants to create a structure of rewards for its top 12 executives if they follow the safety standards correctly. But one consumer advocacy group says they don't think PG&E executives should be rewarded for what essentially amounts to doing their job and doing the right thing. So we'll be following that hearing and everything else happening here with PG&E.